How is LeBron James doing it? How is LeBron James in better shape than Anthony Davis? How is LeBron James in better shape than Zion Williamson? I'm serious. But I get it with Zion Williamson. You gave him a whole lot of money real fast. He got a contract for $193 million. And he got the Nike money. That was $75, $80 million. So I get it. And the money's guaranteed. So some people, when they get that kind of bread at 20, 21, 22, and it's all guaranteed, they get lazy. And Zion Williamson is not the most disciplined athlete on the planet. He's not. Now there's stipulations with Zion's contract, but he not hungry like LeBron James. LeBron James is trying to be the greatest basketball player of all time. He's trying to score 40 or 50,000 points. So his records are never broken. Zion Williamson, his mentality is totally different. He got rich real quick and he had a couple of injuries. He got the women, and don't, don't get it twisted. You could deal with a bunch of women, a bunch of pretty women. They'll slow you down too. But uh, you watch LeBron James at 38, 39 at the end of the month. He's still running up and down the court. He got a lot of energy. He's hungry. How you that hungry? You a billionaire. How you that hungry and you a billionaire? You're still playing basketball at a high level. And you putting it on jokers that's 21, 22, 25, 27, 28. You still better than them jokers. And you in better shape. So won't these young people, these young athletes, why don't they just call LeBron and be like, LeBron, I know you're putting a lot of money into your body as far as a million dollars with trainers and masseuse and all this other stuff. I need to get on your level. So, what's, what's, the, what's the blueprint? But I'll be embarrassed if a 40-year-old joker was outworking me and I'm 22, 23 years old, 24 years old. I would be embarrassed, especially if I'm a professional athlete. I'm not having that. Not at all. Now, if I'm on some old bull junk job, now if I'm on a bull job, job I, don't, I don't care. I'm just looking at the clock trying to get, you know, trying to get off work. I don't care. But if I'm an athlete, nah, you ain't out working me. Not if I'm 22 years old and you 40. Nah, nah, I'm going to take that personal. But some old 9 to 5, stiff type job, man, I'm just trying to get through the day. But an athlete? Nah. Nope. It ain't happening. But these NBA players, LeBron is dog of him. He's almost 40 years old. LeBron could play another three or four years. And now I want to talk about these high school athletes looking for these scholarships. Now, high school football players, if you're not getting a whole lot of offers, it's not an indication that you're not putting in that work. You got to realize these schools today, they want transfer athletes first. Then they want JUCO athletes then they want high school athletes because a lot of these head coaches on the college level, they got to win, so they going with experience. But what you got to realize, there's nothing wrong with these Division II schools. Nothing wrong with these Division III schools. Everybody can't go Power 5. Everybody can't go FBS. So a lot of these athletes that got these skills, that's one-star athletes, two-star athletes, three-star athletes, they're not getting the offers that they want. That's because these schools are like, look, I got to win now. So they're jumping on transfers and JUCO athletes because they're more seasoned. But yeah, don't just dismiss the HBCUs. Don't dismiss the Division IIs. And don't dismiss the Division threes. You want to uh, play when you go to college. You want to play. You don't want to sit the bench two, three years. So when you pick a school, make sure it's the right school for you. And don't get down on yourself if you're not 
getting them offers from Oregon, Tennessee, and things like that. And if you go Division Two or a Divis Division One AA, if you ball out, then you can just hit the transfer portal. And then you have offers from bigger schools. You can use the smaller school as a stepping stone to get where you want to go. That power five level. But just don't dismiss smaller schools coming out of high school. Don't do that. Now, the other sports news. But that's just for the parents and the kids that's coming to high school. Now, the other sports news. We got... We got Michigan who's working on a lucrative contract extension for Jim Harbaugh. We're talking about $55, 60000000 million over the next four years. Look, Jim Harbaugh, he could do anything. He could do anything at Michigan, still get contract extensions. This joker was interviewing for NFL jobs the last couple years. He didn't even know if he wanted to stay at Michigan. He was losing a bunch of games, as far as losing a bunch of games to Ohio State, and he still kept his job. And he can commit tons of violations, NCAA recruiting violations. He still keeps his job. Because you know why? He gets them to the playoffs. He's their biggest star. But yeah, look for that deal to get done. Seven McGee, who early in the week put his name in the transfer portal, decided to take his name out of the transfer portal and stay at Jackson State. It kind of makes sense. Like, who was really going to want you, offer you a scholarship, if you didn't put no work in when you went to Oregon, then you went to Jackson State, Thought you can uh, reestablish yourself as far as a college football player, a league college football player. Use Jackson State for a stepping stone so you can leave Jackson State. But you realize that Jackson State, there's some ballers at Jackson State. And it's not as easy as you thought. You're going to have guys just as good as you, all better. So you try to transfer portal and then realize, man, nobody's going to want me. So you went back to Jackson State. Now, Seven McGee probably say something different now. I did read where he said that he had a great talk with the coaching staff. He had a great talk with T.C. Taylor. They didn't decide to come back to Jackson State. But if you're not putting work in, is it going to be that easy for you to transfer to a, maybe a Power 5 school? I mean, the Power 5, they're going to look at your resume and be like, he don't do nothing. So why should we offer him a scholarship? So it was a good move, him going back to Jackson State. Whatever reason he used to go back to Jackson State. And he's, he's one of the fastest players on the team. I hope in 2024, he could be productive. I'm talking about more than when he was in 2023. Because he showed a little something in 2023, not much. Now, South Carolina State has hired a head coach. They hired Benedict's. Shinnis Berry, who stays in the state of South Carolina. Now, you're going, he won like 20-something games in two years at Benedict. They went to the playoffs both years. Now he's going to go to South Carolina State, where he will have a bigger recruiting budget. Look for South Carolina to bounce back in 2024 and have a winning record. Now, I don't know the financials of his contract with South Carolina State, but I'm sure it's a substantial raise. I'm sure it's around three to four hundred thousand dollars a year. That's what HBCU elite coaches or head coaches make around three to four hundred thousand dollars a year.